On this week's Talking with Topher, I did do some grounding, like Jesse Harless uh, recommended, which is something I never had. So to have a stable foundation today is leaps and bounds from where I once was. Permit was ready. And I was like, okay, all right, maybe, maybe the grounding had something to do with this. And now let's get into episode 177. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back on this August 24th, 2023. And again, I am so glad to have you all back here with me. Um, before I get into anything today, let me start off the way I always do, by saying thank you. That's right. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to the new subscribers. Remember, if you're new to the podcast, to subscribe, all right? It's free for you to do. So what's a better reason than that? Just click that subscribe button. If you want to get more involved with the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And then, of course, check out the link tree. Link tree, link tree, link tree. Go ahead, copy, share, um, pass this thing around. And, of course, if you want to get more TWT, it's all in the link tree in the description below the video. So go and check that out. And now let's get into the podcast. So it has been a very interesting week uh, for me. So my realization was I have got some deep things that are percolating up. That's right. Um, no matter how good we feel, no matter how good we are doing, um, there's always something that comes back, right? Um, I, I, everybody knows how I fight with alcoholism and I don't really fight with it as much as I live next to it now. Um, but being where I am today, being, and going through the things that I've gone through and re- building myself, um, taking better care of my health, becoming more physically fit. Um, all of those things are great. All of those things will build um, a great foundation to stand on, which is something I never had. So to have a stable foundation today is leaps and bounds from where I once was. Um, but I realized that in a few things in my life, um, some with my uh, position, my career, my job, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, I realized that there was something not quite right. And I know everybody does whatever for, for a job, for your life. Things don't always go right. Maybe you do something and somebody shows you how you did it wrong, right? And that's fine. I consider those to be learning experiences. Um, when someone corrects me, I don't take it as um, negative. I don't take it as a, an attack on me. I take it as um, uh, constructive criticism, okay? Um, I've, I've been more and more like this in the last three years. Um, you know, I was never like this before. I did think people were attacking me. I did think that they were criticizing what I was doing. I didn't realize that the, all they were trying to do was show me what the, what, uh, give me a better direction, right? So I'm going through all of this and I realized, and I, I made a joke a couple weeks ago, um, I think I said something last week too, um, about just wanting a hug from my dad. And it really does start there. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you about it because I don't think enough people talk about what actually um, goes on in therapy, right? And I'm getting back into therapy. Um, I haven't as of this moment yet, but by, probably by the time you watch this, I have. Um, but what I realized was is that I was uh, dwelling on emotions that were beyond my control. Um, I was taking how people were 
acting towards me and or not responding or not showing any anything, you know, towards what I was doing as a negative thing. And it was like I was chasing a hug from my dad. And I had to really sit and reflect about this. Now, a couple things that I did uh, before I continue on. Um, I did do some grounding, like Jesse Harless uh, recommended. Um, I also heard it that the following day, um, one of my coworkers also said something about grounding. So I went home, and I was having a bad time, right? I'm dealing with all these emotions. I'm dealing with this feeling stuck, always feeling like I am not as good as I think I am as if I was failing, as if I was letting people down. And I'm really, really tired of feeling this way. I really am. It's very annoying. It's very frustrating. I know I'm not that person anymore. Um, But for some reason, my brain wants me to be. Uh, These lingering thoughts and criticisms and self-doubt follows me. And I think it does this for a lot of us, right? This isn't just me. This is whatever you're going through, however you're portraying yourself, um, we don't always look at ourselves, even in the mirror, as our best selves. Um, We usually see something negative. And that, I mean, is it really something that nobody goes through? Man, if they're out there, I would love to have you on my podcast because I want to meet somebody that is so sure of themselves and so highly body mind, um, capable of just loving themselves, I really want to meet those people because I don't feel like they exist. I feel the reality is, is we all self doubt. We all say we can't, we all say we could do better. We all say that, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best and my best won't do. Um, So when I did this grounding, I was out in my backyard for 13 minutes, um, you know, just walking around barefoot on the grass, really nice. It was calming, no music, no, no podcast, just me walking around looking for my dog's pedometer that was missing for over a week. Well, by the end of the 13 minutes, I found my dog's pedometer, which I thought was really cool. I was like, oh, okay, great. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I was hacked. I had to shut off my credit card, whatever. It's not the first time. It won't be the last. This is the uh, new age we live in. If you're not getting hacked and having to change your credit cards, then um, good for you. But I don't know. I think I was on a Facebook page or one of those Instagram ads, and I think they got me. But I go inside, and I'm, like, freaking out because I haven't had my debit card in a week. And I go, and I open the mail. And there's my debit card. And I was like, holy shit, that's weird. So not only am I feeling a little bit better from the grounding, and I honestly can't say whether or not it was the grounding or if it was just walking around, not listening to anything except for the birds chirping and just my, you know, enjoying the sunshine. So keep that in mind as well. I'm not a strong believer in a lot of, um, stuff, right? I'm not a believer in uh, somebody higher than me. I don't think there was one creator for us all. I don't. um, I really have a hard time with that. I have a hard time believing that our earth is in a dome and that climate change is all our fault. Um, So that's just me. That's my thoughts. Um, But what I did realize was, is I was like, hey, I calmed down. I collected my thoughts and now things are kind of working out, right? So I go to bed and I wake up and I've been working real hard trying to get a permit for one of our locations. Well, I woke up that morning and all of a sudden the permit was ready. And I was like, okay, all right, maybe, maybe the grounding had something to do with this, but I can't really say that it did. But everybody that I talked to was like, yeah, of course it was the grounding. And I'm like, (laughs) but you believe in the grounding. So I'm skeptical of it, right? I don't, I don't know. I'm just skeptical. I'm skeptical of anything that I don't understand completely, right? We don't have any control over it. There's not a lot of science on it, although there is a lot of science on grounding um, in general. Right now, there wasn't. 
So um, I was just like, holy shit, maybe, maybe this did something. So all those things start com- coming into a positive light. Uh, things are becoming complete, and I'm feeling a little bit better. And then I realized that the feeling that I am having, I was getting in jujitsu as well. My confidence level was not there. So I wasn't executing moves. I wasn't executing submissions. Um, I let people play their game. I'd play into their game, which gets me smashed and tapped out, right? So all those things uh, start up here, start right up here. Um, I truthfully do believe that. Um, But I realized that it's the same exact thought that I was having trouble with when I was trying to do my job. When I was teaching people, when I'm doing my jujitsu, and I, I realized it was this old, old me, I think, right? And maybe it's the old, old me creeping back, being like, you're not this better person. You're, you're just the same old, same old with a different mask on this time. And I was like, no, I'm not. I am a different person today. I am a changed man. And my brain doesn't want to allow me to feel this change or to be happy with it. So, therefore, I have now isolated what is truly bothering me. And unfortunately, at this point in time, it's going to take more than just me to get through it. So, because of all of that, um, I reached out to a friend. He's been in therapy for a long time. He has a great office that he goes to. And I just gave them a call and left them a message. And, of course, I will be back with more updates later on. But I am going back into therapy, everybody. Um, A lot of people don't believe in therapists, and I understand that. I don't blame you. Just like I don't believe in grounding or a higher power. Um, I do believe in therapy, though. I think therapy is a very good thing. I think it always helps to talk to somebody that's not within your close family or friends because now they're looking at it through a different lens. Now, do you have to build a relationship? Do you have to let things out that you may want to keep inside? Yeah, the only way it's going to work is if you do that. So when you do that and you open yourself up, that allows them to see what's going on and then of course you know it's probably going to be x amount of times before they even can even start evaluating me properly which is fine i'm up for the challenge but what i've realized is is i needed to ask for help and now i'm asking for that help and i think that is the most important part of this um, podcast today is that when you need help you need to ask for it. It doesn't matter who you are or how strong you are or how, how much you uh, support others or they depend on you or you can, you can do everything that you need to do as a person. Um, sometimes we need to give up our power and our control and give it to somebody else and allow them to help us move through it. Um, but again... Like I always say, um, this therapist that I'll be working with will be maybe the first and last one, but I always keep an open mind that if I don't feel a good connection after the first um, session, that after that, um, I like to do at least one to three sessions. I I, kind of treat therapy like a new show. Right. You watch a new show. You watch the first episode. It doesn't really grab you. Well, my rule is three episodes before you call it quits. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing with my therapy. I go to them three times. And after three times, if I'm not happy, I will call that office again and I will have my doctor changed. Um, But you got to you got to be willing to open up and have the discussions about things that are hard to talk about in order to get a good read off of your new therapist. So I will make sure to do all of that, and hopefully, and this doesn't happen very often, but it's happened twice in my life where I've walked in. Well, I'm hoping it's going to happen twice in my life. Let's put it that way. Um, but the but 
that one time that I found a therapist on a one sh- one shot um, was was a great experience, right? Uh, we really clicked. It really worked, um, and he helped me with so much that I I know I could probably go back to him, but I want to speak to somebody different this time. I mainly saw that therapist for uh, getting my medications under control and then getting me off of those medications. So this time it's a different route, no medications. I don't want any pills or anything like that. I just want to go and disclose what I'm going through and maybe have them um, probably evaluate what's going on and help me um, kind of get through it without any types of medications. I don't, like I said, uh, you know, a few times now, I'm not, I'm, I know what depression is. I know what it is. It's not depression this time. It is just a feeling of being deflated, a feeling of not being good enough, um, you know, and, and just not feeling um, like I can. And I know I can, but I don't feel it. So I need to help somebody help me feel it. You know what I mean? So, oh, man, it's going to be... It's going to be an interesting process again, but here we go. You know, this is how you get better. This is how things happen, and this is what you need to do in order to get there. It's not always going to be, I can do this. All I need to do is quit quit my habit, and everything's going to be fixed. It's just not going to happen that way. So I'm really glad that these people are out there, um, that they can help so many of us. I know they're shorthanded. Um, I found out that there's not a lot of in-person anymore. They actually make you specify if you want in-person. I want in-person. Um, I feel like doing a Zoom or over the phone is just too impersonal, and it doesn't get the job that I need done. But that's the way I live my whole life. If I could write everything down in a notebook and have people send me books to flip through for products, and I would love that world again. Um, I think this digital world has really, really fucked us today. Um, I know it's done a lot for us to free us up and everything else, but at the same time, I really do see it completely changing our world, our world view, and how we view each other today. And, and, and I don't think it's more positive. I think it's more negative, unfortunately. But, yeah, so if you're out there and you're listening and you need help, you're not alone. Right. Sometimes we really do need to uh, give it to somebody else and just ask for the help um, for things that we can't help ourselves. All right. So that's it. I'm getting back into therapy. I'm kind of excited about it because I'm choosing to do this. Right. This is my choice. So I am a little excited and I don't see this being a long term thing, but who knows? It could go longer. It could, you know, I, it could be another four years before I'm done with this. But getting it started is the hardest part. And and it's crazy to me that, you know, a lot of people um, get in this position like myself um, and don't ask for help. You know, we don't. I never used to. I didn't think I needed it, right? I'm better than this. I can get through this. I'm tough enough, right? No, no, I've realized that no matter how tough or strong we are, we we really do um, need others to help pick us up sometimes um, because I was like, this is something that I just can't do on my own. So that's kind of what's been going on here. I've been, you know, just grinding away and working all the time and At the end of the day, just be mindful of who's around you, what's going on, and don't be so quick to yell, scream, or, um, you know, belittle somebody um, because you just don't know what they're going through, right? Um, It's it's, it's a tough, you can't tell without asking, Um, and it's just like when I'm on the road and somebody cuts me off and I have trouble with this, I used to get upset and angry. I mean, I get a little bit under my breath now, but at the end of the day, 
I just figure out how to either get around the person or get away from them and, or just continue on my way and, and just put it off to the side because, um, you know, one of the things that really helped me um, was letting go of anger and frustration and hostility towards individuals that may or may not know that I hold these feelings for them. But why am I going to allow these feelings to drive me, to move me, to um, basically hold me back, right? There was people in my life that I wanted dead because they stole from me or they treated me wrongly um, or, or something to that extent. And when I said, you know what, I don't need this anymore, I don't want to hold on to this, and I just let it go, um, that was one of the ways that really helped me uh, find myself and find happiness within myself. Um, but I guess, you know, it's gone as far as it can, and I've let go of all of it now. Um, but, you know, we still got those things that hang around from when we're kids. And no matter what, you know, I, I love my parents and my parents um, are were great and they did everything in their power to raise me right and make me responsible and do what was necessary to make me a somewhat civilized human being in this crazy mixed up world. Um, but I also realized that when, um, you know, I hung on to a lot of this, it just... Man, it really drags you down. But, you know, letting go of it fixed some things, just not all of it. So um, I don't hold it against my parents. I'm not mad at them. But no matter what, ah, that's what it was. No matter what our parents do, um, they're going to mess up. It's going to affect us negatively. And these things have their way of coming back into your life. And... You just have to understand that it wasn't really, I mean, granted, I'm talking about my parents only right at this moment, but it wasn't all their fault. They did the best they could. Um, so I'm not going to go there and like bash my parents, but a lot of the feelings that I'm holding on to are things that happened when I was a child um, that I'm still fighting, right? And so that being said, when I talk to this person about all these things, um, you know, it, it'll help me probably clarify uh, what's going on, why I'm hanging on to it. And maybe, just maybe, it'll help me, you know, build even a better relationship with both my parents is what I'm thinking. So, um, but yeah, so let, let, let's take a quick break. Unleash your style. Discover slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com where fashion meets individuality. Get ready to elevate your style game and make a statement that's uniquely you. At slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, they believe that clothing is an expression of your personality. Their collection is designed to empower you, inspire confidence, and help you embrace your true self. Crafted with precision and passion, their garments are meticulously made using the finest materials from luxurious fabrics to impeccable stitching. Every piece reflects their commitment to quality. They understand that comfort is key, which is why they have carefully designed each garment with your comfort in mind. Experience the perfect blend of style and coziness that will keep you looking and feeling great all day long. Don't just take my word for it. Join the slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com community where style mavens and trendsetters come together. When you're dressing for your everyday wardrobe or seeking that one statement piece, slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com has you covered. Their wide range of styles and sizes ensures that everyone can find their perfect fit. Unleash your style and make a lasting impression with slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Visit their website today. Join the fashion revolution and let your clothing tell the story. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Your style, your story. I'm back and we're going to get into some Topher's Topics.
So to go along with everything I've been talking about, aggression is a result of self-control, not lack thereof. A, a new study contests the belief that aggression stems from poor self-control. Instead, it suggests uh, that aggression is often a deliberate controlled act inflicted to maximize uh, retribution. This finding, based on meta-analysis of multiple psychology and neurology studies, can contradicts the traditional approach of treating violent tendencies by boosting self-control. It implies that such interventions may even enable some people to better execute their aggressive instincts. So key facts, um, I'm going to read these real quick. Uh, aggression does not necessarily arise from poor self-control. Instead, it can be calculated act of ret retribution requiring self-discipline to carry out efficiently. Two, evidence suggests that self-control training programs do not necessarily reduce violent tendencies. Three, research indicates that the brain's prefrontal cortex, a center of the self-control, shows increased activity during aggression, further debunking the association between poor self-control and aggression. So this is a look at holding on to your angers, dealing with your angers, and, and it, it doesn't all have to be that self-control. Um, it just, it's inside of us, and we have to learn how to let it go. Um, so this new study by Virginia Commonwealth University researcher have found that aggression is not always the product of poor self-control, but instead often can be the product of a successful self-control in order to inflict greater retribution. Um, unleashing aggression, the hidden power of self-control, um, neuroscience. So this is an all new study on what can be done to further help you with your aggression and getting power back over your self-control. Unleashing aggression, the hidden power of self-control. Today, we're challenging what we thought we knew about aggression and self-control. Has someone ever told you that losing your temper, that aggression, is a sign of poor self-control? Yes. A new study shakes that belief. Researchers embarked on a journey to understand aggression's roots, examining dozens of studies from psychology to neurology. They discovered aggression often arises from successful self-control, not a lack of it. The most aggressive individuals do not necessarily lack self-discipline. In fact, mm. programs that aim to boost self-control often fail to curb their violent tendencies. This flies in the face of the common narrative that self-control acts as a buffer against aggression. The research suggests aggression is often premeditated and is not just an impulsive act. Oh. Individuals seeking revenge may deliberately exercise self-restraint, allowing them to maximize their retribution. Even psychopaths, who are often more prone to violent acts, are found to develop self-control skills over time. This challenges the long-held belief that aggression is primarily a product of poor self-control. The reality, as it turns out, is more nuanced. Self-control can both limit and fuel aggression, depending on the person and the situation. These findings demand a rethink in how we approach therapies and interventions designed to reduce violence by enhancing self-control. Ironically, we might just be teaching some individuals how to better implement their aggressive tendencies. So the next time you think aggression and self-control are polar opposites, remember, they can be two sides of the same coin. I mean, that is pretty cool because that's what I was always told. Your aggression and everything else is a lack of your self-control. Why can't you control yourself? You need to be able to control yourself. You've got to calm down. And I got to points in my life where I couldn't. I couldn't control myself. I would blow up at the littlest things, and sometimes I still do. I still freak out at my computer when it doesn't work. I still freak out at all this power surging, but I've just learned to deal with it and accept it um, for what it is. But, I mean, this is the new studies. This is what they're finding out that, you know, it, by teaching people about how to control their anger, you know, they're actually t teaching them how to uh, almost – uh, dial in and be being capable of um, being able to take 
control of their anger and their hostility and, and, and manifest it in a, in a really negative way, um, which could help them do harm to others in a sense. That's what I got from this. So, hey, if you think I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, let's see here. All right. So um, we got caged and cut open for bile, the fight to free Asians farmed bears. Now, there's no video on this. Um, China, obviously, is a different animal than we are. Um, one, I'll say this right off the bat, bears are not cuddly, cute, um, and if you're anywhere near them, get away as soon as you can. Um, if you got trash cans, this and that, lock them up and make sure you don't give them a food source. They're not cute and cuddly animals. I don't know if anybody else has seen the video where the woman is holding a small black bear and then the bear latches onto her face and rips it off. Um, yeah, we need to stop making these monsters seem cute, cuddly, and uh, uh, like a teddy bear or whatever. Um, you know, I think... That if they're on your property, you should be able to just take them out. Um, I'm not saying that this, what's going on here in China, what they're doing, I don't even know why they're digging for bile. I don't want to know why. I think this is gross, but this is what they do. They find something, they go, oh, this is magical, and then they kill millions of it's just like the rhino tusk or the elephant tusk or any anything else that you like the ivory for for pianos and stuff. I mean, have you have you heard yet uh, lately that what's going on is is uh, with elephants, right? For example, um, they used to have these long tusks, right, and they were hunted for their long tusks, and over generations and generations of slaughter and death. For their tusks that elephants today now grow shorter or have no tusks at all so to keep that animal safe it over generations learned not to grow its tusks now i don't know how that happens i have no idea it sounds completely batshit crazy and not even feasible but it is happening. Elephants are having elephants, right? Obviously. And they're growing and they're growing no tusks, which is a defense mechanism against us. Isn't that fucking wild? So I don't know what these people are doing to these beers. But now, also on the other end, Chinese zoo denies its sun bears are people in costume. So <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. So this is a bear in a zoo, and here you go. Oh. A zoo in eastern China is trying to reassure visitors their sun bears are not people dressed in costumes. Rumors and conspiracy theories have been swirling on social media after a viral video of a sun bear standing on its hind legs looking uncannily human and appearing to wave at the crowd. Its fur appears loose and wrinkled in places almost like an ill-fitting bear suit. Sun bears are the world's smallest bear species and the zoo insists people just don't understand their behavior. I will have to call that bullshit. That is not a person. Nope. That was a bear. You could clearly see it was a bear. The way that the shoulders were, the way that the chest was caving in, it was that was not a human in a costume. Um, bears do stand up. Um, there has been plenty of bears caught on um, one of those like hunting cameras out in the woods. And some people thought that they were Bigfoot. Um, because they would stand up on their hind legs and they would walk. And they would walk past the trail cam and it, they would get the picture and it would be fuzzy and it would look like a Sasquatch. Um, bears stand. Uh, bears uh, climb trees. Um, they do all kinds of shit that like people are like, oh, I didn't know they did that. Yeah, they're a fucking bear. They're a bear, people. They do all kinds of things. 
And the one thing that they're going to do to get their hands on you is eat you from asshole to face. That's how they do it. It is brutal, disgusting, and God, we need to stop treating them like cuddly animals. But I also don't agree with locking them up in cages. I think zoos are disgusting. Um, I think they should all be put out of business, and we should just stop putting them in cages. You know, uh, it's just awful. But I also think we need to stop putting a lot of humans in cages, too, because, you know, um, these animals uh, didn't go to trial, so they're just locked in a cage, you know, against their own will. Um, And then, you know, you get people that go to trial, and they're innocent, and they get proven guilty, and then they go sit in a cell. Um, and it's just wrong. So I don't know about this, but that did not look human to me. I don't know. I, but China, China's got a different look on everything. I mean, they, they eat dogs. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I don't really know what to say after that. You know, they, they do. They eat dogs. It's, it's, it's just what they do. Oh man. People are wild. This world is crazy today. So let's get into some, Politics, because this was funny to me. DeSantis appointee to Disney board taught seminar using discredited research claiming white people, white people, all right? I am saying this correctly. White people were slaves in America. Okay. Um, I don't know where this person got their research. I don't know who they were speaking to, but I'm pretty sure that there were some white people that were slaves. I believe that uh, they were, but I don't think we call them slaves. We call them prisoners, right? We call them prisoners today. Prisoners um, are, are basically slaves. Um, they have to do work. Uh, they get no pay whatsoever. And uh, we basically call that free labor um, from the prison. And that is basically a slave. Anybody who is working for nothing um, and expected to do something, I mean... Isn't that, isn't that close to the definition of a slave um, being, being uh, uh, locked up and having to do something? And don't get me wrong, I'm, I have no idea what I'm really talking about here, but I thought this was crazy. I thought this was absolutely insane. How could you even bring this up? How could you even talk about this? Because we all know how slavery was in America, how we built this country on such a disgusting, horrible thing. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and try to say that white people were also enslaved? It's like, that's, what are you trying to say? Are you, uh, are you trying to defend slavery? Uh, I, it, it made no sense to me, and I was just really appalled by it. Um, but let's see what uh, they had to say. Harry is a former businessman, uh, former pastor, and he now runs a Christian uh, ministry group focused on young uh, men, and he held these classes to uh, talk about critical race theory. That's been a huge issue for Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida. And in one of those sessions, he made these completely unfounded comments about slavery. I want to be clear, the historians that we spoke to said this was made up, fabricated material previously uh, fabricated that he cited. Um, Take a listen to some of those comments from Perry. Look at old newspapers, um, as as old as you can find, um, and you'll find that whites were also slaves in America. Uh, the Irish slave trade began when James II sold 30,000 Irish prisoners as slaves to the New World. His proclamation of 1625, which you can go back and see, required Irish political prisoners be sent overseas and sold to English settlers in the West Indies. From 1641 to 1652, over 500,000 Irish were killed by the English, and another 300,000 were sold as slaves. And then there was, um, there was uh, intentional breeding, and there's no better word for it than that, of Irish and African slaves. So historians who spoke to CNN said that material that he cited for that was previously uh, invented and is ahistorical. They said that whites were never considered slaves in America legally or socially. Uh, 300,000 Irish were not sent to the Americas uh, as slaves. This English uh, king, James II, who he cited as issuing this proclamation in 1725, he wasn't even born uh, for eight years. He didn't take the throne until uh, 1685. And the Irish did not 
breed uh, with African slaves. So what they told us is basically there uh, no evidence for, for any of what he just said. Now, this article goes on uh, for another minute and 42 seconds, but uh, I've heard all I need to hear. This is wild shit. How old is this dude? Is this like, uh, 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 what is it, Mitch Connell? Like when he when he froze on stage for 60 seconds and then comes back and he won't answer the question of whether or not he talked to a doctor. Is this like the other lady that has all of her people always around her, not allowing her to answer any questions? And then anytime she does have to answer a question, she's there feeding her the answers. Or is this like Biden who... I'm sorry. I didn't see a sandbag on that stage, but everybody says that there's a sandbag, including breaking points. So I have to believe that he tripped over a sandbag. But I mean, he fell upstairs. He tripped over a sandbag. He fell off a bike. These people are so fucking old and so useless now. They, they really are useless people today that are just holding on to power to hold on to power. And this is so disgusting to hear. I am really uh, tired of that anybody trying to justify anything that was done to build this country. We can't justify it. We can look at it and go, hey, that was really bad. Let's not do that anymore. But we can't justify it. We can't turn around and be like, slavery is not that bad. White people were slaves too. Uh, no, they weren't, and that is so wrong of you to say. Um, but again, where did he get his info? Who wrote this for him? Who told him to sit there and say all of this shit? You know, because there was somebody behind it. So it just, it, it blows my mind that even today, people are making up excuses and trying to uh, uh, make make what happened in this country okay. And we can't make it okay today. This is, it was wrong. We have to acknowledge that it was wrong. We need to study why it was wrong and what happened so that it doesn't happen again. We can't just bury it and make it go away like everybody wants to because that just causes more and it causes more people to be segregated into boxes. It causes more people to be hated. It causes more sides and more violence and more anger. That's all this keeps doing every time. It's the same with uh, unfortunately, all the transgender people out there who want to be this, that, and the other thing. I don't care what you want to be. Be what you want to be. But the more that you do this, the more segregation you cause. The more hatred, the more uh, boxed you become in. Um, it's just, I think it's backwards thinking. I think it's wrong to do these things it's wrong to not allow people to have their own opinions that even go against your own opinions and then hear them out and talk about them instead we want to say no my way is right your way is wrong you're this type of person and that's it that's all this causes and it just continues it on and on and on and on and if we don't do something about it ourselves this is what's going to keep happening and it's going to keep driving people into specific boxes and then those specific boxes fight amongst each other because they don't know how to have a discussion today. We have lost that in America. We have lost our debating. We have lost our communication. We have lost the opportunity to be able to have a discussion and have opposite opinions, but maybe find a ground in the center that we can both agree on. But we're never going to get there if we don't have a discussion about it. And it, it just, it's, it's sad, and this is just disgusting. Uh, so, all right, I, I think this is great. Um, I've been spouting about this for years now. Arbit arbitrator rules mass state troopers who lost their jobs over COVID-19 vaccine refusal to be reinstated. Now... I do think this is a good thing. It is way too fucking late. They should have never done this in the first place. We should have never pushed the vaccine. We should have never done anything that we did. Mass, social distancing, staying in your home, all of it. It was all a waste of time. It was a waste of everybody's time. And now we've just given people uh, stupid things to do that are completely unnecessary. 
Um, I still see people with masks in their car today. I still see people walking in the stores with masks. I still see people with chin beards. It is absolutely retarded. What they have done to this country is retarded. And now these people are finally going to get their jobs back. Well, how many of them are just sitting around waiting for their job back, right? Not many, I'm assuming. I'm assuming some of them are dead because they killed themselves because of this. Some of them may be living on the streets now because they lost everything when they lost their job because of this. And what happens to those people? This is what I want to know. I want to know who is getting the right thing done. Who's giving them back their lives? Their lives were destroyed. Their lives were ripped away from them because of this stupid vaccine that they felt was the end-all, be-all to uh, this virus. Well, guess what? There is no end-all, be-all to viruses. You want to talk about some crazy shit going on right now? Leopard disease is back. Leprosy? Leprosy. Leprosy is back. It's in New York. Okay. What? Do you know what leprosy is? Look it up. Look it up. I'll, I'll find a link for you. But you've got to see this. It is absolutely horrible, disgusting. It deforms people. It is brutal. Brutal. Way worse than COVID. Way worse. We have a vaccine for this, people. We have one that works. Right? We got one for measles. We got, the, we got, we got uh, uh, whooping cough stuff. We, got, we do have a lot of vaccines that actually work. But I do believe because of this vaccine, more people are even more hesitant towards vaccines. All vaccines today because of their stupidity, because of their stupid message, because of their mistakes and what they have done to all of us across the world. Now, they've retarded us all. And now some of us don't know how to get back. But even though I'm happy that these people are going to get their jobs reinstated, you tell me how many of their lives get reinstated, right? That's what I'm saying, man. This is crazy. I can't believe it took this long to finally do this, you know? I just, I, it's unbelievable today. All right, this was wild. Um, this is a contractor um, that won the lottery he won a million dollars so it's not like he won a ton of money like i'm sorry but a million dollars today is really not that much money anymore um it puts you at the bottom of the millionaire pool if you have one million dollars in the bank but he won one million dollars in a lottery he had multiple jobs out there to track down a local contractor and so have some of his customers. They tell investigative reporter Ted Daniel he was paid for work he didn't finish. As Ted discovered, the contractor hit the road after hitting it big. We were contacted by a Westport woman who sent us pictures of her front yard. It's a mess. She says a contractor tore it up right before winning a lot of money on a scratch ticket. Jeff Farabee's pool and patio company is called Picture Perfect. Picture Perfect doesn't no. come to mind. No, not at all. Susanna Medeiros' home has looked anything but since oh my March. Gosh. The front steps <gasps> gone, walkway ripped up, rocks and pavers all over the driveway. It must drive you crazy. Yeah, it drives us crazy. I mean, it's like every, every day we have to look at it. Susanna showed us the messages she sent to Farabee. Good afternoon, checking in again. It's politely asking. Oh, this would get my anger going. I would I would not be able to handle this. I can barely handle one piece of trash in my driveway. Never mind this. This is awful to do to people. Him to finish the work. He actually responded to me and said, I will be there. Susanna thought her luck had changed. But it turns out Jeff Barabee was the one with the good fortune. So what did you find out? That week was the week that he won the lottery and then after that radio silence yep that's Barabee and his million dollar winning scratch ticket he chose to take the lump sum 650 grand before tax that is not that much money today 650 grand is definitely a good chunk of change but man it's not a lot of money and you're willing to fuck over so many people for 650 grand I, I, I guess I can see it 
He posted the win on his public Facebook page and pictures of a camper, a boat, and a new truck. This guy just won the lottery and I mean right there you just spent what? $120,000. I mean that truck alone is 80, 90k. The boat probably 100 and something k and then the motorhome? Holy shit, dude. I mean, you just blew half of it. And my pool's falling apart. Joshua Hetzler is a Fall River firefighter. He says he paid Barabee $56,000 <gasps> to complete a walkway and restore his concrete pool. That is coming from the bottom of the coping. This Joshua claims it wasn't done right. I deserve to have it done right, and he can't do it right, so give me the money back so I can pay to have someone do it right. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. 25 investigates oh called, my God. texted. Jeff. And searched for Barabee at homes he's associated with in Westport and Tiverton, Rhode Island. Is he aware that there are customers who are not happy with him right now? I believe so. We found his so sister. She says he's traveling out of state. Where? To be honest with you, I don't know where he is. I didn't want to know because I can't lie if I don't know. I would say we're probably in the hole for about between eleven and twelve thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Yep. For most people. You would think, oh, hey, I won. Let me settle up with everybody and then I can really be free to do whatever I want to do. Barabee messaged Susanna Medeiros immediately after we spoke with his sister. He blamed health issues for his absence and said he would return her materials and provide a partial refund. She's still waiting for that. If a contractor has left you high and dry, you can file with the State Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation. We have a link to the complaint form on our website. Just absolutely awful. Um, I, I, I hate hearing about this. Um, it's one of the reasons I get so nervous when I hire people to do anything. Um, I, I talk to a lot of people, um, before, um, I hire anybody. Uh, I do a lot of background searching. I talk to previous customers. Um, I only talk to, I only talk to contractors or people that have been recommended to me by somebody else who got a good experience. Um, but you got to do your due diligence. These people, well, they suck. They just suck. It happens more often than not where these guys come in, rip down walls, leave you with studs, take all your money, and then that's it. They disappear. They're just gone. So now they took all the money for the job. You're left with a empty hole, nothing fixed, and worse place than you were when they started, and they just up and leave. And when you do file and you do complain and you do do these things and go to that link and file with the Better Business Bureau, I mean, how many times, what's the percentage rate of those actually being resolved? I don't, I don't really don't think it's as much as we would like it to be. Um, right. Uh, uh, you know, if you, if you, you were going on a, you know, a hundred percent scale, I bet you 20% of those get resolved, which is really, really sad. So crazy shit going on in the Twitch world. Um, Twitch streamer charged with inciting a riot after giveaway draws huge crowds to Union Square in New York. <laughs> oh my God. Chaos broke out in New York City's Holy Union shit. Square on Friday after Twitch streamer Kai Sinet held a giveaway event. What? Back up. Sinet, who has over 15 million followers across social media platforms, said during a Wednesday Twitch stream that he would be hosting a huge giveaway Friday at 4 p.m. in Union Square. What goes on from here on out, bro, you feel what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody for themselves. There's a war out there, man. Crowds gathered and became unruly, blocking traffic, throwing debris, and clinging to moving cars. Holy shit. The NYPD took Sinet in custody in connection to the large crowds on Friday, according to a law enforcement source. What? Wow. Wow. He was trying to do a good thing. He was trying to do like a giveaway. 
and then he gets charged with causing a riot? Is it his fault that they rioted? And what was he giving away that everybody was so uh, over the moon for? Like, what, did, what was it that they, what were they giving? It looked like um, one of those Streamlab lab, uh, little keyboards there uh, for the Streamlab. I use uh, OBS for streaming, but um, I, want, I, want to, I want to pay for Streamlab. I heard it's way better, uh, much better program. But it looked like that, a camera that didn't look more than maybe with that lens on it, the camera itself, maybe uh, 1400 bucks. So, I mean, in the picture, I only saw like maybe, maybe two grand worth of equipment. So what was this giant giveaway that he was doing? And if you choose to do something like that, you're supposed to have a license, pull permits and get, um, a venue, right? So maybe because he didn't do any of that and he just used, um, the streets of New York and then this happened, maybe that's why they can charge him. Um, there's no, uh, other things on the story at the moment. It's still developing at this time. Um, but probably by the time you watch this, um, I'll sound silly because they'll have figured it out and already told us what he was doing and everything like that. But man, you try to do a good thing and people can't even let that happen. They just got to everything. Everything is got to turn into chaos and, 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 and anger and rioting and just people can't get a grip on themselves today. And you know who I blame? I blame the government. I blame what has happened to our society all on them. They're the ones that did all of this. And then when they pulled the ripcord and said we could go back to everything like we were supposed to, they're they're like, what do you what do you what do you mean everybody's broken? What happened? And you're like, what do you what do you mean? You broke them, stupid. Took away their jobs, their livelihoods, their houses, their everything. Now they can't afford to get back to even where they were at. And, and you don't expect this shit to happen. And I feel bad for him for trying to do a good thing and getting arrested. But what are you doing? Why didn't you set this up properly? Why didn't you actually pull a venue and do the proper uh, steps to pull something off like this, right? So, I mean, you can't offer people something for free or a raffle or anything without them losing their shit because so many people have lost so much that that could be, they look at that sometimes. I, okay, I believe that they look at that like their way back, right? If I can get this, you know, that could get me started, you know, to get back to where I was before everything went to shit. So, man, yeah, that's too bad for that Twitch guy. That's too bad. I don't know his name, um, so that's that's my that's my fault. But that is the podcast for today, everybody. I want to thank you all again for watching and subscribing, and welcome to the new subscribers. As always, I mean, it's so glad, so happy to have so many of you joining lately. The channel's getting bigger and bigger, and I greatly appreciate it. Let's push it to that five hundred. You know, grab that link, that link tree link, and share it, share it with everybody, send it out there. And, uh, let's make this thing bigger. I need your help to do that. Remember if you're just stopping by hit the subscribe button, it's free. Who doesn't like free? All right. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to get your chance to be a guest or you want to tell your story, then go ahead and send an email over to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. It's the official email of the podcast and i just hope everybody out there enjoys their thursday i hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend be safe be kind to one another and as always i will talk to you later